All right, so I'm putting these hoses on here uh, a couple reasons. One, to close off the open connections on the pump just to keep any dirt or debris from getting in there. Uh, also, I will need you know the connections on here to make sure I don't have an interference when I go to test the uh, Lovejoy coupling. So this is just temporary at this point. This line is a suction into the pump, so it's likely to you know, remain there. This one, of course, is a pump discharge. Right now it's just going back into the tank, the transmission, but ultimately will actually go to the valves that control the hydraulics. And then the, from the app out, the discharge of the valves will then come back to the to the return in the reservoir. Removing these hard lines. Don't know whether I'm going to use this spool valve or not. I might might use it for something. Not sure yet. I need to, you know, prep this dash remove some additional components. I don't need this PTO lever, don't need these two cables because we're going to replace them with new cables. Off. Yeah, there we go. That's the, the throttle. I'll reuse this throttle control bracket. So I'm going to save the nuts, the, the screws here. We'll have to put a new cable on it that's longer to reach. But you know, I mean, that's easy enough to do. It's just pressed in here. This is, this is a fuse for the uh, lighting circuit and we're going to use lights. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just leave this, um, yeah, leave it in there for the time being. I don't think it'll be in the way. Last thing to take out is this PTO clutch. This is what's holding the, the rod in. There's a roll pin here, which goes through this connection. So we'll knock this roll pin out. This shaft will slide through the dash.
more pin here, which holds the spring, which presses on the PTO interlock switch. So we need to drive this one out. There's the PTO switch is still here, the ignition switch, light switch, and spool valve for the hydraulic lift. We'll leave that stuff in there. These two hood latches, one on each side, won't need those. most of the stuff out of here. The only thing, you know, that I'm thinking about is interference between the spool valve and the power steering. We'll have to see how that all works out. Okay, well that's a future concern. I mean, it's just bolted in. It's got hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Frank here, making some progress on the all-terrain Cub Cadet forklift. I just cleaned out the inside of the dash tower with all the other controls that we won't be using or need to be replaced or relocated. Next step is to go ahead and put the front grill and hood back on to get spacing for where the seat might go. The issue I'm, you know, I need to address is seat position and, you know, relative to the dash. And on some, and I appreciate the comments, a lot of, a lot of folks posted links to a couple other forklift garden tractors. Uh, one being a later model Cub Cadet that was driven backwards as I'm going to do here. So I, I'm... And I think it was a, it might have been a Super Garden tractor, not sure. Anyway, it was probably a 90s, I think it was a 90s vintage. Anyway, uh, so I need to get the seat placement relative to the dash, you know, figured out here. And so that's why I'm put the put the grill and hood back on and we'll check that out. There are slots in the holes through this front grill, which give you about an inch of adjustment. And I'm going to slide it as far forward as possible. And this is just temporarily to hold it in place. So that sits almost 
almost in the proper position. On these uh, tractors, the, it typically this exhaust pipe just barely clears the edge of the hood, so it looks pretty close. So it's about right at 15 inches to the underside. Leave that sit like that. I think hydraulic fluid may be dripping from the spool valve. Kept these fasteners from rusting. We're going to come up with a method to operate this, the control plates here from new dash position. So I've just set the seat on here, just put it on a bucket. And that's you know, too close to the dash. All right, I got a noodle on this for a little while. Decide what to do, we'll come back. That's just to hold the dash in place. So I'm faced with lengthening the frame, which 
I think is going to make the most the most sense because the only thing that changes is the length of the drive shaft which is just a piece of 5 8 inch hot rolled round stock can make a new drive shaft easily so that's I think the other one we saw had the seat actually up on the hood or further back which I hesitate to do because that gets it even higher and I think it would look odd over the hood. I think the only sensible I think the only sensible solution here is to add about a foot to the frame right here. All right, so I, I, I don't see any other way around it. It will be faster and easier, I think, to add a foot to the frame than anything else. That also helps us because it pushes the engine further forward, increases the counterbalance force. It also allows me to add weight closer to the front. So I may not lose anything in in overall length or gain anything in overall length by adding a foot in the middle rather than a foot out in front for weight bracket uh, maybe I can get the weights closer to the front on the grill and avoid you know something sticking way out way out in front I like the idea of having the foot pads on both places because that gives you a place to step to get on and off. So I think that'll be fine. And I have extra foot pads, foot step pads. Uh, I think the thing to do is to, to make it look practical, to get it to be practical, I need that extra foot. And that will change the angle of my legs coming down, and I can have my legs down here. I can lower the seat a little bit, pick the height I want. Uh, so I think that's that's the thing to do. All right, I'm going to take this apart. We'll come back. Here. Oh, look who's here. Look who's here. Where's my brew brew? Where'd brew brew go, huh? Where's your where's your brother? Where's your little brother? Huh? Where's your little brother? Come here, sit. That's good. Cool. Give me that ball. Where's your little brother, brew brew? Huh? My good boy, my good boy. Yeah. All right.
right, so that's the drive shaft. Easy enough to take out. We'll have to make a new one. Now I need to take these two, two shafts off. This is the lift uh, shaft, rock shaft, and this is the brake and neutral return on the hydro. Uh, so both of these have multiple roll pins in them. One, two, three, four on this shaft. One, two on this larger shaft. So getting these roll pins out is always a challenge. I put some um, penetrating oil on them a couple hours ago. That's one. It's the wrong angle here. It's tough to. All right, it's moving. There's a little gap in the frame that this pin needs to exit through. So these are actually coming out easier than I expected. All right, so there's one more right here. That's actually a 5 six, I think that's a 5 16 pin. This is the float pin, uh, the way it's used on the lift mechanism allows the device being lifted to float versus be held in a particular position by the lift. Depending on whether you have it installed like this where it doesn't engage or like this where it constrains the lift mechanism. All right, let's try to get the pins out of this other shaft. We'll have to drive the shaft out because these um, two collars on here are, uh, you know, these two collars are still on the shaft. Even though the pins are gone, there may be some resistance driving them out. All right, let's see if we can get some of these other pins out.
those are coming out surprisingly easy. I'm a little bit astonished here. last one that's one two three four five out of that chef they all came right out all right so the next task is to drive these two shafts out this collar's loose That's the brake pedal shaft. Last one is this big rock shaft. See if that's any, if that's as easy to come out. Looks like it's moving a little bit here, but not much. So I mushroomed the end of this shaft, trying to drive it through before, so now it won't fit through the sleeve. boys doing? How my boys doing here? Huh? 
You being good boys? Are you being good boys? Come here. Come here. Come here. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Brew, brew. Come here. Come here, brew, brew. Sit. Come here. Sit. 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 Be a good boy. Sit. Sit. Who wants a treat? You want a treat? Are you being a good boy for a treat? I don't know. Who's being a good boy? Come around here. Come here. Butchie. Butchie. Sit. Sit. Both of you guys. Sit. 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 No. Sit. Sit. All this destruction has been in preparation for cutting the frame and lengthening the frame, inserting a 12 or 16 inch section. And I had to remove the rock shaft. I had to cut the larger one because I just couldn't knock it out. The smaller one with the brake pedal came out. Uh, it's even possible that we'll move that brake pedal to the other side, turn around, Maybe even use it for something. We'll see. Uh, so, several hours of, of work here trying to get that apart without uh, doing too much damage. But, of course, the large rock shaft did get, <laughs> did get cut. But it's just a piece of one-inch round stock, so it could be replaced. It could knock the collars off, and, and it could be, uh, could be reused or re... could be... Could be reinstalled it won't be reinstalled on this tractor but i do keep a stash of parts that have come off these tractors and uh who know never know when you might need one for another project so all right i think that's it for this week we'll come back next week with marking the frame we'll cut the frame We'll spread it apart with a couple of pieces of angle iron bolted to it, put it back together, adjust the distance, the spacing, length of the insert so that we have, you know, good seating position, good dash position, and make that decision before we actually cut, the, cut some steel to fit the, the frame. So we're getting close to that. Once we have the frame lengthened, we'll go to the plasma table and cut some pieces of steel to fit, weld them up, uh, and then keep on trucking. Got uh, power steering cylinder installed on the other side. That'll be easy. We're going to cut the rear of the fender, cut a section out of the rear of the fender right here. So we'll cut this section out because we need the space for the mass to go down. Need to decide on how we're going to uh, mount the mast. Uh, I have um, some ideas. The kind of the one that's in my mind right now is to cut out of th probably 3 8 inch or at least quarter inch steel a long flat bar uh, that will run maybe the length of the tractor maybe all the way up to this called Frankenstein nut um, up to here all the way back well maybe it won't go to there because the frame comes out here and I want it to be flush so maybe it'll come to here it'll be a reinforcement of the frame and come out beyond the frame and have the attachment for the bottom of the mast pivot point that sort of thing so that's what my current thought is for attaching the mast to the frame that'll spread the weight over more of the frame and you know won't put all that weight on this this frame is only eighth inch uh, steel now 
you know, to be honest with you, <laughs> you know, it's probably plenty strong. These tractors are built like little tanks, um, but no sense risking it. I need some way to attach it anyway, and certainly I can't attach it to the existing frame, so I need to build something to attach it to, so it'll parallel the outside of this frame. I hope you found some of this stuff interesting. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell. All that good stuff. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>